Hey people, Ed Midsole Bud here. I've got another running shoe review for you today from On. This is the On Cloud Stratus 3. It features some key tech from the Swiss manufacturer's arsenal. So what type of shoe is this? Where's it gonna fit into your running rotation? Let's answer all these questions and more with my initial review. Welcome back people, On have fired me this shoe over for testing, although they're not going to be vetting my views before my valued viewers get to see them. They are refraining from paying me for this one, but I do appreciate them sending it over. We have here in my UK size 11, US 11 and a half, a 334 gram weight is around about 11.8 ounces here for the Cloud Stratus 3. So I guess it's kind of in the same ballpark as something like the Forever and Nitro from Puma or the Pegasus 40 from Nike. Now the manufacturer's specifications reckon there's about 32 millimeters of heel stack here and about 26 millimeters in the forefoot. I've got quite a bit more than that though with my very accurate measurements. I've got something closer to about 38 here in the heel of my pair and something along the lines of about 32 millimeters in the forefoot. Though I would suggest the drop of the shoe doesn't feel quite as severe as that due to the very compressive nature of these CloudTech pods here. I had some varied softness readings here using the Shure Durometer A scale, around about 37, so that does come in quite a bit firmer than the average of 28. And in those rubber areas on the outsole, it comes in at about 60, which is sort of the average really for rubber on our running shoe. About 11.9 centimeters in the widest point in the forefoot, and 9.1 centimeters in the widest point of the heel. That makes it a slightly wider base than the average running shoe. Before we kick off the review with the upper first, make sure you hit that subscribe button, but also give this video a thumbs up like. It really helps out, you know, it makes sense. Thanks actually to all of you that have subscribed recently. We've had about a thousand or something in the last 28 days, which is absolutely cosmic. So otherwise, the Cloud Stratus does appear to be a very sort of breathable shoe. Lots of holes here in the toe box area, though there is like an internal booty as well, which does actually limit the breathability of the shoe somewhat. It's a little bit warmer than I imagined as well. And some of the materials here are actually quite padded. The tongue here is rather padded and it creeps up towards the top of that tongue, but oddly tapers away right where you need it where the laces actually go across so if you're going to do a runner's knot you might run into a little bit of lace pressure there from the fact that the padding just runs out so do be aware I am finding the upper actually quite generous in the Clown Stratus 3. In terms of the materials, I'm around to pull the laces in quite a bit to get a good fit sort of on top of my foot though that isn't so much the case in the toe box it's mainly around the sides of the shoe that I've got that issue. Though I did manage to get a very good lockdown with the laces. They're quite sort of taut and rigid sort of laces. And it is quite a thick tongue as well. So if you're going to be buying this shoe for perhaps running in a very hot climate, you should think about that first. The laces, like I said, don't have too much flexibility to them. Though they're reasonable enough in length. So if you do have a very narrow foot, you might end up with quite a lot of excess lace length once you've tied the shoe up. There's some very thick padding here around the heel of the shoe. There is a small counter in the back there and quite a bit of rigidity due to this sort of plastic clip. I found the upper of the shoe quite comfortable though I'm a little bit perplexed at these sort of initial lace loops here where the initial eyelets would be. I mean the design of the shoe is pretty cool but doesn't really work all that well for me in my sort of slightly narrow foot. Just sort of bunches up a little bit at the sort of first initial eyelets. Just kind of help it think why not keep it simple? and just have some standard eyelets there just for the first ones and then the lace loops. One thing that some people might like if you have a wider foot is the fact that the shoe's toe box doesn't sort of taper in too quickly on the lateral side. So if you need a little bit more width there, perhaps you've got some larger toes or whatever, then perhaps the Cloud Strat 3 could be ideal, just could present you with a little bit more width. I do like the profile of the shoe in terms of sort of casual use. I am finding it rather warm though in the English summertime. I mean, most shoes are sort of reasonably warm at this time of year but there is a lot of padding here and it does soak up quite a lot of moisture so after my initial runs i'm going to give it a 2.4 out of 3 for the upper it's just a little bit too warm for me too much padding and in the wrong places too i need more here in the tongue though certainly a comfortable enough upper for daily cruising around midsole 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 now talking of midsole now you can pick up one of the hoodies on one of the links down here somewhere so we've got a double layer of that Helion foam here. 
with those cloud tech pods certainly does feel a little bit more forgiving underfoot than the cloud monster did i wasn't a huge fan of the feel of that shoe though most of those very compressive sections here of the midsole are in the heel at the rear and it doesn't feel quite so sort of compressive up front the shoe does almost make you feel like it wants you to land on the heel or the midfoot and then sort of roll through i can understand though now while they've added that speed board to this shoe just on top of the midsole i think it evens out and equalizes is the compression that you get from these pods without this i can see the whole structure being a little bit uneven and perhaps a little bit unpredictable i did find that after some running in this shoe at sort of steady pace that my legs are aching perhaps a little bit in some different places like there's different muscles being used here I think that perhaps is down to the fact that I'm getting used to running in this type of shoe. Not really had that before in any other shoe, but I'm certainly using some different parts of the legs while running in the Cloud Stratus 3. Perhaps when I'm running in some foam based shoes, I think it's just a little bit more consistent underfoot. Though I think for walking and sort of general activities, you could go far wrong than picking up this if perhaps you're standing up all day. I did find the shoe works a little bit better for me at some faster paces. I'm not talking like 5 or 10k, but just throwing in some harder effort into the run. Though I'm finding that each stride can be a tad more surprising i suppose depending on where you land with the shoe perhaps if you're running on some surfaces with some uneven terrain or camber then it's probably not the ideal option the speedboard here does stabilize things to some degree but i wouldn't suggest that i'd advise anybody who needs a stability shoe to go for this that side the helion foam here or it's sort of like a rubberized foam i suppose does need to be a little bit firmer to actually make the shoe design runnable interesting that this tech here isn't the same that they're using in their flagship model i think it's the cloud boom as such cloud tech to me does seem to be more of an impact absorber than something that propels you along which does make me actually want to try out the cloud surfer and see what that's all about when you're talking the heft of something like a pegasus 40 or the forever run nitro those two shoes just feel a lot more nimble on foot and a bit more versatile than this one although i do like the ride of this shoe way more than the cloud monster i tried out last year this one perhaps a steady mile muncher for me rather than anything like a sort of easy or recovery day i think the foam to me feels a little bit like some early react type stuff from nike i mean that could be music to your ears you may love that early rack stuff it does have that rubbery consistency to it certainly i'll give it a 2.5 so far out of three for the midsole it's just very locked into a specific use for me and i am slowly getting used to it outsole now so on i have put most of the rubber here on the outsole in the forefoot area of the shoe though there is some decent coverage here at the back and it stretches quite a way back into the heel the lugs actually are very small and it's quite coarse as well some good grip on offer here in the cloud stratus 3 there's only four actual sort of sections of the shoe that actually feature the exposed midsole material so it should improve the durability somewhat and there's nowhere for any debris or stones to get caught up in so it's just going to protect the higher impact areas of the shoe and extend that longevity so no real worries about durability too much here i think it's going to stand the test of time you're going to get sort of typical use now quite how this exposed midsole is going to hold up we don't know i haven't too much experience in this perhaps you can chime in if you've been running in some on shoes let us know what this stuff does over time the outsole in some ways reminds me of all the problems that you used to get with something like the beacon from new balance where there was a lot of exposed midsole material there though here at least we've got a hell of a lot more rubber than we did in that shoe i found the grip very good on some multi-surface terrain some decent sort of grip on grass as well on grit and stones it perhaps wasn't the best but the intended use case here really is road and pavement and i think you'll be fine on that i can't see this being great on trails or anything but who's going to buy it for that it's not really made for that odd camber. I think the outsole is probably one of the better parts of the shoe so far on the review. I'll give it a 2.8 out of 3 after my initial runs. Value now. Okay, this shoe retails for £170 here in the UK. I have to be honest, I do think that's quite a high price. When you consider that for another 20 quid you can pick up the Super Blast, which I think is probably about 50 grams lighter than this one and a lot more versatile, a bit more nimble on foot. I think I'd 
probably end up going for that every time though it could be that the shoe appeals to you if you like that cloud tech implementation then i can see you're really enjoying this one perhaps if you've got a slightly wider foot too this could be absolutely perfect i can see the appeal here of the squashiness that you do get with these cloud tech pods but as a slight runner i always benefit from having a slightly lighter shoe something with less heft and when you consider that the pegasus 40 is available it's something like 115 quid and it's about the same weight but it just feels a lot more propulsive a lot more nimble i think the closest thing that i can think of to this shoe is probably something like the puma forever on nitro but again that's quite a bit cheaper and it features a little bit more of a versatile use case so all in all it's a bit of an odd price i think for what we've got here it does feel like a sort of more chunky shoe it is interesting that the foam here actually comes in quite a bit firmer than i thought it would be but i guess it has to be due to that structure i've seen a massive uptake on on running models they seem to be featured in a lot of high street stores too loads of people are picking them up and there's lots of interest in the models too so hope you've been enjoying the review i mean it's a well designed shoe out of the box it does feel like a really good quality item there's no dodgy stitching or glue marks or anything like that so i will be lowering the value score a little bit i'm going to give it a 2.2 .2 out of three i think it's a good quality shoe don't get me wrong i just think it's a bit of a niche use case certainly a better shoe for me than the cloud monster and i think it's a little bit more forgiving on foot though the cost and the slightly limited versatility of it does mean i'm going to lower the value score to a 2.2 .2 out of three Are you a fan of on shoes? Let me know how you've got on with them over the course of the last few years. Are you picking this one up? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. A quick musical interlude for you from Bell and Sebastian today with their 1996 album, If You're Feeling Sinister. Really love the first track on this one, the stars of track and field. Beautiful, mellow, very quiet and warm intro. Really love Dylan in the movies as well, which is track four. Really simple arrangements here. Acoustic guitars, bass drums, a little bit of electric thrown in and some organ just wonderful sounds across the whole album a bit later on they introduce some sort of horn sections and stuff and brass into the arrangements and it really just elevates the songs upwards and upwards absolutely fantastic really love the early output from bell and sebastian go and check this one out people if you can find it wonderful red cover really stands out if you're feeling sinister thanks for tuning in people hope you enjoyed today's review if you haven't done so already please hit that subscribe button but also give this video a thumbs up like it really helps out my name's ed budd and i'll be seeing you